Okay, so I'm going to have a rant. Um, back in the day, um, I used to watch uh, the uh, TV uh, documentaries. In particular, there was one by the BBC. This is years ago, many years ago. Uh, it was called The Great War. It's a fantastic documentary. It was a series of maybe about 20 episodes. And it was all about the Great War. And it had great narrative and had... Uh, eyewitness accounts of the uh, of the Great War. And uh, I remember an image I saw uh, of the, and you've probably seen it yourself, uh, of the people going over the top uh, of the trenches in order to fight the Germans. And as they go over the top, one guy, he looks like he's been shot and he slumps down onto the barbed wire as everybody else goes forward, charging the enemy. It's really weird, but it's all that inspired me to actually, you know, be a squaddy and join the army for that action, sense of adventure, sense of danger. It was only years later I realised that that particular sequence was fake. I didn't realise that. Now, what I'm trying to say is that I saw that image. It was impressed in that image, and it sort of changed my behaviour. It directed my behavior and directed my thinking. And so I realized that every single time um, we're watching images, we are being heavily influenced by them. Um, I remember some time back, um, I decided that I was going to do a dream diary. I was, I was doing some sort of like self improvement or something like that. And one of the suggestions was to do a dream diary to try and find out what's going on in your mind, in your subconscious. And dream diaries are quite difficult uh, because you think, oh, I can't remember my dreams. But um, when you sort of discipline yourself to say that each time when you go up, you're going to write what you, you, you dreamt about, it's quite interesting how your memory is jogged. So I've done this dream diary for about a month and um, it was shocking. It was absolutely shocking. I noticed that at least 60%, maybe 70% of the dreams which I was having was based on content uh, from what I've seen on the television. So it was some dreams which were related to the things what I'd seen on the television. And when I saw that, I promptly got rid of my television. I just got rid of it. I just went without it for about two years or something. I only went back to, well, friends, some friends of mine, they were talking about an artist who I, I liked, Tramir Dylan Picker. And apparently it was going to be a documentary, but I didn't have a television. So they kindly donate, donated me a television to watch it. And, oh, you know, the, um, the bad habit continued. Okay, so what am I saying? So what I've realised now in my life is that a lot of the things what I see, and especially things which have been presented to fact, isn't fact. Okay, now obviously uh, there are certain things, for example, like the moon landings, people say, oh, that's not true, da-da-da-da-da. Well, okay, fine. Uh, but I'm more interested in the Second World War and how it's presented, okay? Now, with the Second World War, it was presented that we went to war because a dictatorship uh, was basically doing colonisation of Europe instead of colonisation of Africa, and the uh, existing nations weren't having it. So the Lebensraum of the uh, Nazi Germany, instead of looking at Africa, but that was all tied up, or Asia, okay, in America, America's was tied up and Australia was tied up, they decided that they were going to do it in, in Europe. And that is an absolute no-go to the powers that be. And the straw that broke the camel's back, as we all know, was going for Poland. Yeah? Uh, yeah. Well, we sort of uh, ducked out at Czechoslovakia, and Poland was a no-go. Well, 
Now, only many years later, 70 years later, 80 years later, yeah, you dig a bit deeper and we have to ask ourselves, we went to war over Poland. At the end of the war, Poland was occupied by the Soviets. When we went to war over Poland, the Soviets were allies of Germany, right? So at the end of that war, okay, uh, Poland was still unresolved and Poland was occupied. It was occupied by one of the former Axis powers, if you like, Soviet Union, who then became our allies. Okay, so what was the war about? We had an empire uh, prior to that war, and we used that empire to remain our status. But unlike Ukraine now, yeah, we had the Lend Lease. So all the weaponry and machinery, what we got from the manufacturing base of America, we had to pay back. It's only recently in the last sort of 10 or 15 years had we actually paid all those loans back for borrowing the equipment and loaning the equipment to fight that war in the Second World War. So we ended up in high debt, because war is about debt, and we lost our empire and we lost our influence in the world. And then since then, you've had a load of revisionists talking about how bad the empire was and da-da-da-da-da-da-da. And obviously the countries themselves which have got their independence, have an independent story about the tyranny of the British Empire, etc. And to be, that's all wrong, as far as I'm, I'm wrong. Let's go back now to the Second World War and going uh, to war about uh, Poland. Yeah? At that time, we have to ask ourselves, you had Spain, that was fascist. Germany was fascist. Austria was fascist. Italy was fascist. Portugal was fascist. Hungary was fascist. Romania was fascist. Quisling in Norway was like fascist. So who are we saving Europe from precisely? Yeah. Most of Europe was fascist. We've gone in there as a, a democracy saying, that, you know, who do you think you're kidding Mr. Hitler, so to speak? But then we've got that situation, a puzzling situation of um, Rudolf Hess flying over to uh, Britain, Scotland, with the idea of making up a peace. Now, that trip was a disaster in respect to the plane crashed. I'm wondering if that plane hadn't crashed, how things would have panned out. The fact that the plane crashed made it public. The media got hold of it and made it public. And it was probably something which was going to be uh, working behind the scenes which came to the front and it cut off an avenue for Britain at that time. That's my thinking on it. It's, we, it's still a mystery all these years later, not over 90, you know, 80 years later, it's still a mystery as to why the deputy of the Nazi party, who had supremacy throughout the whole of Europe, decided to get in an aeroplane, fly to Britain to talk about peace. And we probably won't hear about it in my lifetime, but it's probably the case that we were about to give up. Probably some deal. You keep your empire, we keep our European empire. And everyone's happy. BC France is happy. Spain's happy. Italy's happy. Norway's happy. Um... Hungary, Romania, and German Czech are happy. Okay? So we have to, you know, I, I, I'm just questioning everything about the Second World War, what we've been told. We talk about Burma, for example. What were we doing in Burma? Why were we fighting in Burma? How was Burma a threat to Britain? How? Uh, we talk about it was a threat to Britain. It was a threat not so much to Britain, but to the British Empire. What empire? Well, the jewel in the crown, India. Yeah. Uh, but two years after the Second World War, India gains its independence. So all that fighting in Bur Burma, what was it for? What was the fighting in Burma for? From a British point of view. Yeah. Uh, within 15 years, at the end of the Second World War, we have given up our empire. Was the Second World War worth it? 
Now, we do talk about the situation with the uh, concentrations lager, concentration camps, and the millions, you know, I think over 12 odd million people who were exterminated uh, within those concentration camps with the Jews taking a hefty chunk of that. Okay. But that the Second World War wasn't about stopping the mass murder of people. Okay, it wasn't about that. When it comes to the Second World War, the only time we talk about the uh, concentration camps from an Allied perspective is when we've liberated them. And how are we liberating these camps? We haven't gone there specifically to liberate those camps. It was a consequence of our advancement into Europe, okay, that these camps become liberated. Um. So I just I just question, you know, what what was it all about, the Second World War? Um, that, that's the first point I want to say. That's what I just want to pull out there, because if we're being hoodwinked about the Second World War, what else are we being hoodwinked about? There's many many things. I'm not a great thing on conspiracy theory. I don't think the world is that organized, but there are certain elements which we need. Uh, Keep a handle on. So look, that's what I want to say at the moment. It's just, just something which on my mind. Uh, you know, there are other elements which we're talking about in present day, but uh, that's it. That's what I'm putting out there for now. Okay.